A while back, I did a video on how to use your phone as a webcam in OBS. Like if you're streaming to services like Twitch or Mixer or anything that you would use OBS Studio for. And while that quickly became one of our most popular videos on the channel, the question now is how do you use your phone as a webcam for everything else? Today, I have a solution for you guys. My name is Chris, this is Coalition Gaming, and today I'll be your computer technician. Real quick, if you're new around here and you're into PC hardware, tech, gaming, streaming, tutorials, news, and reviews, hit that subscribe button and hit that bell button so you don't miss a single upload. Also, I stream every Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific at twitch.tv slash coalition gaming crew. Link to that will be in the description below. Feel free to drop us a follow. Stop in during a stream, say hello, let's talk some tech. First of all, I hope that all of you out there are dealing with this pandemic in the best way possible and I hope that everyone is doing fine. With more people being at home, more people wanting to stream, more people doing distance learning, working from home, and needing a way to stream or essentially use a camera or a webcam or anything like that, things like capture cards, USB webcams, all that either went entirely out of stock or the prices for all that shot up. Trying to find a webcam right now isn't the easiest thing to do. And what used to cost 40 or 50 bucks now costs 80, 90, 100 or more for the same thing. And you know, let's not even talk about capture cards. Now pretty much all of us watching YouTube and all of us in general have a cell phone. And a lot of us have a pretty expensive cell phone and these have pretty good cameras. The, uh, the manufacturers, they put a lot of work into making the cameras in these, these phones do as good as possible. And so a big question is how to use that as a webcam. Whereas in the previous video that I did on this, it was specifically through OBS over the network via NDI. That, that was a, a whole different process. And again, it would only work in OBS Studio. And you may not be familiar with what OBS Studio is, or you may want to be using it to stream to things like Hangouts, Microsoft Teams, Zoom, all sorts of other stuff. I found out about a solution called IvyCam. IvyCam is free with a small watermark and you need a application on your phone as well as on the computer in order to pair it up. It's a very simple and straightforward process and then you can just select IvyCam as a source to be used in anything including OBS Studio if you want to stream to services like Twitch, Mixer, or YouTube or anything like that, uh, Zoom, Hangouts, uh, I guess Google Duo, Microsoft Teams, anything. You can just select the camera for anything and it will work. So let's get down to the desktop and show you guys how to do that. Real quick though, the app is available on both Android and iPhone. It's called Ivy Cam Webcam. I V Cam, not I V Y Cam, not I V Cam. It's just I V and Cam. Look that up on your App Store or the Google Play Store and you'll see it there. And so I went ahead and pulled up IvyCam on the Google Play Store, and I'm just going to hit the install button to get that going. Once it's installed, I'm just going to press open. Go ahead and allow the permissions. And then you get a screen that says searching for IvyCam on PC. So yeah, let's get down there. So now we're down here at the desktop and uh, I've got the phone right here, still doing its thing, searching for uh, Ivy Cam on the PC. But before we are getting to the step where we connect the phone to the computer, by the way, I, this says that it works over network or USB, but if you're gonna be using a camera as a, a web, sorry, a phone as a webcam on your PC, it's a good idea to keep a USB cable connected so it constantly, constantly stays charged and powered you don't want your webcam dying on you, you know? So it's gonna go through USB cable the way that we're gonna show you. It might say it's working over network, whatever the case is, I'm connecting a USB cable to it. So let's switch over to my desktop screen and I'll show you where you can download IvyCam for the PC. There we are, let's pull that up. There's JD Tech Gear doing keyboard stuff on Twitch. Make sure you guys go check him out. And I've already searched IvyCam on Google. It's going to come from a site called E2Soft. You're sorry, E2Esoft.com. I'm going to go ahead and click the top link there. Bring that up. And you see here, download for Windows. So go ahead and click the download for Windows, save the file, and then run the installation. It's very fast. It's not a big file at all. 
and then uh, here we are. Continue with the installation. You can have it run at startup if you want. I'm going to turn that off. I'm, I am going to let it create a desktop shortcut though. Install. There goes the install process. Now we're going to run ivycam.exe. Now you get this that comes up and it says not connected in the bottom left. So now I'm going to take the phone and I'm going to connect the USB cable. So you can purchase it as well and that'll probably remove the, uh, the watermark. So something to check out. Let's go ahead and connect the, uh, the USB cable now. Wow. wow. Okay. okay. You can see me there now. You might be hearing an echo right now because we're hearing the microphone coming from this Pixel 2. So let me mute that. You can see it down here uh, in the settings. Actually, go down to the tray. Right click it. So it says play audio too. None. Then it reconnects, no more echo. Because, I mean, that's technically monitoring the audio coming off of it. And to be honest, it doesn't sound bad and it doesn't look bad at all. So you can see here, I'm gonna go ahead and set the camera up now where the main camera is and show you guys how it looks if it, as if it was in my stream setup. Okay, now with OBS open, I'm gonna show you how to add it. Now this would apply to any software where you add a webcam you know just the steps will change but we'll show you like discord for example next i'm going to go down here to the plus sign add a video capture source call it uh ivy cam press enter and then i get to choose so i can choose the different uh, sources here but i'm going to put e2 esoft ivy cam hey and there i am and so uh resolution fps type i mean most people are after 1080p but for something like this you can get away with uh I mean, 720p is usually fine, but I think that's what you're limited to with Ivy Cam anyways, because if you hit custom and then look at the resolutions available, you only get 1280 by 720 and tr trying to type 1920 hasn't worked for me. Yeah, it just goes to 1280. So, I mean, if I try to cheat and I do like that, press copy and then I type 1920 by 1080 like that. Uh, yeah, nothing happens. So won't work 1280 by 720 match output fps or i'm just gonna put it on highest fps it seems to want to capture at 24 25 but again as a face cam like this that's perfectly fine highest fps there we go i mean it, you can see it looks perfectly fine <laughs> okay so i'm gonna go ahead and scale this uh let's see transform full screen now in obs you can crop a way to get rid of the uh the uh the watermark that's right there by uh, like pressing alt just doing this hey what do you know look boom <laughs> might be a little uneven sure but uh let's just even it out hey there you go well, that works right but let's stick this in my stream setup over here we'll go to talking right now i have the main camera turned off so the main box is blank we're gonna add a video capture device. I'm gonna add existing, do Ivy Cam. And there's my box. But I gotta put that under the uh, under the right thing. So let's just drag it down here. There we are. And that's how it would look in my stream setup. And uh, as you can see, hey, looks fine, right? Looks pretty good. So now we're up back to the full screen of how it would look in my setup, but let's switch on over to the clean test so you can see how it looks fully, you know, in a bigger screen. I'm gonna undo the crop that I did, by the way, so you guys can see the full thing. There we are. And there you go, everything is working in auto right now. And so if I wanna show you the adjustments that you can make with the software, we're just gonna click over here back to my, uh, my other scene. Shows my desktop there, and uh, let's pull up the IV Camp software.
can't forget to put myself in there as well. So with the IV cam software pulled up right here, you can see me, of course. We're gonna hit the settings button and you'll see here exposure can be controlled as well as ISO. And right now it's an automatic. That's what the checkbox here is for. Checkbox for auto white balance. If you uncheck white balance, then um, I'm not sure where the adjustment is for that one because it's not ISO and it's not exposure, but I'm gonna leave auto white balance turned on. But I'm gonna uncheck auto exposure and auto ISO and now I can make things a little darker, take a little bit of ISO out and then exposure because uh, there is a little bit of a hot spot right here. I can bring that down a little bit, a little darker. There we go. And we're adjusted. And look how that looks in my stream setup here. Look how that looks up here in the full screen thing. And the autofocus is working. If you wanted it to focus on something closer to you, just hold it up and it should autofocus within a, in a second or two. Ah, okay, so the trick is if you pull up the software, you click to focus where you want it to. So here, it may not focus right away, but you can just click, boom, done. Click to focus through the app without having to touch the phone. That's really useful. That means you can even force some bokeh if you can get the phone close closer to you for like a cool little you know a little bit of background blur just a little bit but i mean look at that sharpness right it does a pretty good job if you wanted to use the built-in microphone that's in the phone as a microphone for your system in zoom obs discord or any of those services uh it is a little bit of a additional setup that you have to do but there's full instructions on the e2e soft website long story short i'm going to go over here to the desktop i'm going to go down to the tray icon down here right click it and it says play audio 2. now in this list you don't see like a like this is just for monitoring to hear yourself through it to make sure that that's okay but if you see this little thing that says microphone you click that and it pulls up a website with detailed instructions as to how to use the phone as a microphone as well. So you do need an extra piece of software, this E2ESoft VSC, and what that will do is install a virtual audio device. And uh, once that's installed, basically you go back to it, hit play audio too, and then you select the E2ESoft V audio device. Once you have that, the V audio device will be selectable as a microphone in any of your softwares. And that's how you can configure it. I'll leave a link to this page down in the description below as well. So you guys can check it out. It's, a, it's another straightforward uh, little instructional tutorial thing, but uh, shouldn't be much trouble. So speaking of using this in other programs outside of OBS Studio, like Discord, for example, or Zoom or Microsoft Teams or anything like that, I'm going to use Discord as the example here. I have Discord pulled up on my desktop right now. I'm going to go over to voice and video. And then in my video settings, I can select a camera. This is where you would select your camera in any of the software you guys are using for wanting to use a webcam. So I have my CA chart, that's my capture card. I have Avermedia webcam, which is the webcam that I have up in the back corner back there. And then I have the E2ESoft IV cam. If I select that, hey, there I am. And that shows you that you can use this in any program that uses that lets you select your webcam. You just select the IV cam. Whatever software you're using, it lets you select your webcam, select it to IV cam, and you'll be able to use this. Oh, one more thing I want to demonstrate is with the software pulled up, let's switch over back to my desktop. With the software pulled up, as you can see here, you could uh, do a capture, like a picture. Cheese and it pulls up the, the folder where that's at. You can also do a video capture by clicking the record button here as well. So you could use this for photos and video recording right in, uh, right in it. So there you go, that'd be nice. And like I mentioned about possibly being able to uh, change cameras and such like that, well, you could do that right in here right here in settings. So again, you just click the cog and you see this, all the settings that you see here, you can click switch cameras and it will switch cameras for you. That's basically what the camera, the other side of the camera is looking at, nothing there, but you can, you can see there's my hand. There we are, I'm gonna switch it back now. All controllable right here into the software. You can even mirror it. You do that, you can flip it. Hey, I'm upside down now. 
you could uh i believe this is like touch up oh it really smooths my skin out look at that i'm gonna make some adjustments here to the exposure again so it looks right yeah i'll turn it off though <laughs> and you can even turn the light on the phone on so like if you want needed additional light there you go like watch you can see the difference in light when i turn it off and on so the flash of the light can also be used if you need additional lighting to to properly light yourself that's kind of cool and it's all controllable right here in the software without having to reach up and touch the phone to do any of this and lastly, while I was actually poking around with the, IT, uh, with the IV cam software, I found that you can change the resolutions and the FPS settings. So if you right click it down in the tray again, click settings, you get this menu right here. You can change the video orientation. Like if you wanted to shoot the video vertical, you could do that as well right here by setting it to portrait. You can change the video size all the way up to 4K. You can capture 4K with it as well and the video FPS. Go ahead and play with these as you guys might like. I'm going to go ahead and try 1920 by 1080 right now and 60 FPS. Press the OK and the camera will disappear, then come back. Boom, boom. And we are back. So let's go over to the big, the big uh, clean test view so you guys can see here. I'm going to go ahead and re-add the camera. Let's see, uh, video capture device, IV cam, and there I am. Now, this is a base canvas of 1920 by 1080, and that's why it doesn't fit. I'd have to stretch it to fit, but I'm gonna go ahead and click properties, and then make an adjustment here by configuring 1920 by 1080. It is selectable now, and so 60 FPS still, but I'm just leaving it on the highest. A, there we are, 60. Now, you see all this like graininess and stuff to it? I'll make some adjustments to see how we can get it to look as best as we can. So I'm going to turn off uh, auto exposure and auto focus, bring the ISO down to get some of the noise down and then bring the exposure down a little bit, a little too dark there. Let's see, bring the, uh, yeah, that should be okay right there. And yeah, there you go. That's how it'll look in 1920 by 1080. What do you think as far as, you know, 1080p, how this might look to you guys? You can see it's pretty sharp, I think. I think it looks pretty good. And so there you have it. Ivy Cam is a pretty fast and simple solution to use your phone as a webcam for any general use that you'd want to use it through a computer. The biggest thing that I like about it, first is the simplicity, second that it's free, but the biggest thing is that a lot of it is controllable via the desktop app, so you don't have to reach up to your phone to change settings like ISO or exposure. You could even change which camera is being used from the computer without having to touch the phone. So if you wanted to switch to the front, front camera, you could do that, or you just stick to the primary back camera. It's all controllable in the app. I thought that was really useful. And so there you have it. If you enjoyed this video, click that like button, subscribe for more. We always got more coming every Friday, every week, we always produce content. So make sure you stick around, don't miss a single upload. And again, feel free to stop by our Twitch at twitch.tv slash Coalition Gaming Crew, Fridays, 8 p.m. Pacific. My name is Chris, this is Coalition Gaming, and I've been your computer technician. Follow us on Twitter, join our Discord, follow us on Instagram. We have all that stuff linked down in the description below, as well as related videos right over here. Got a big backlog of videos if you guys wanted to check them out. Lots of cool stuff. Click one. You should probably click one. Come on. <laughs>